Hey, what's going on my friends? I hope you're all doing absolutely amazing. My name is Jason. If you're new to my channel, I do a whole bunch of tips, tricks, tutorials on photography, videography, and a whole bunch of reviews as well. But today we're gonna to be talking about the a7 IV and the customizable settings that I applied to my a7 IV. Now, this can apply to your camera system as well, so you can see what kind of workflow I have and what kind of settings I actually optimize when it comes to my professional work. And you can actually apply this to your own camera. And you know, if you don't like some of the things, then obviously you change it to your own personal preference but this is my own personal preference and this is what I do with all my brand new cameras I try and find the best workflow possible so when I'm actually out doing my professional work I'm not uh, stumped with like oh where is that setting or diving into the settings and being like oh, I really need this right now so like I said you can watch this now take it away do your own settings in your own camera. But if you don't have the a7 IV, continue watching, get some ideas, then when your a7 IV comes, you can apply it to your a7 IV, rewatch it, whatever. So I'm gonna be recording this on the Atomos Ninja 5, um, so you guys can see exactly what kind of settings I'm actually going to be doing. So let's press record on the Atomos Ninja 5. So going down all the way down to where it says setup, we go across to Operation Customize. Now we go across to Custom Key Dial Settings with the Video Settings. So going directly into that, and you can see it starts with Rear 1. Now the first one I've customized, which is the AEL button, and I've actually put that as white balance. Now white balance is one thing that you just really need to get right in camera. Unless you're recording RAW, um, and you have a really good software that actually supports nice RAW, you don't even have to worry about white balance, but you really need to get white balance correct in camera because with certain lighting situations, if you are running a gun, you really need to get the skin tones down pat perfectly. So white balance, I've got there on the right hand side. So to find white balance, you go down to the second setting and over to number four, which is white balance and then select white balance. Okay, number two, I've actually put zoom. So let's go through this first, clicking in, it's the first one all the way down to number seven and then across to zoom. So essentially this gives me my clear image zoom. So then it gives you a 1.5 times crop into that, which is uh, essentially it digital crops in on the sensor, but because it is a 7K sensor down sampled, you won't be losing any resolution whatsoever. So coming down to the third button, which is C1, I've actually put this as the record button. Now the record button on the a7 IV is on the top, but I actually prefer it at the rear where the a7 III is. Uh, that's a really nice uh, position for my thumb to sit. And if, even if I do have two record options, that's perfect because the FX6, I actually have three record buttons, which you know, you can't have too many record buttons. It's really good to have one on the rear as well as one on the top. So to go into that, you have to go down all the way down to the yellow one, operation customize and across to movie shooting. Uh, so number four, which is the C3 button, I've actually put APS-C crop mode. So this is one button that I'd really love to have on the back and just a click of a thumb, it is right there. So if I don't physically have enough room to go forward, APS-C crop mode is fantastic. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I got the A7 IV because it has that high resolution 7K sensor. And if I do APS-C crop mode, I'm gonna get much more reach. So to find that one, we go over to that record, image quality, and then all the way down to APS-C crop mode. And number five, we go across to focus map display. Now this is actually the rubbish bin or trash bin option, which is a customized button C4. Now to go into that one, we go across to AFMF, focus assistance and focus map. So we click into that. Now focus mapping is an extremely good feature and one of the ones that I've been looking forward to on the a7 IV. So essentially it gives you this whole, you know, different color system. And I did a video previously uh, that was dropped just recently. I think it was potentially last night when I'm actually releasing this or the night before. Uh, the link will be in the description below if you do want to check that one out. But focus mapping is really good for uh, if you can't really see that focal plane. Now I did actually shoot uh, a scene where it was a mother and daughter in a pool and I was quite far away and I 
thought it was focused on it, but it wasn't, and it was focused on the background, so I did miss focus, and if I did have focus mapping there, I, I reckon I would have been able to get that, so that would have been the perfect situation for focus mapping. Okay, so now jumping on to rear two. Now, I've only adjusted one button right here, and that is that uh, focus adjuster nipple thing. Uh, click into that one, and we go across to the video function, audio recording, audio record level. Now, audio recording level is extremely important, especially if you are on the fly, and you are recording directly internal into the, the camera itself. So you really need to keep an eye on those audio record levels because you don't want to be clipping the audio. Uh, that is one of the biggest reasons uh, why you need to keep an eye on the audio. And if you do record a little bit too low, you can bring it up in post. Yes, you do raise the noise floor with it though. So you do want to try and record at that nice optimal level of like negative six to negative 10-ish, somewhere around there when it comes to voice levels. But having that audio button right there to click into is extremely important for my usage. Okay, so going on to the top one. Now there was only one custom button there and that is C2. Uh, they did have C1, which obviously they moved to the back. But uh, this one, I just left that record button at the top because it's always great to have two record buttons. And the next one is autofocus on. Now this is one thing that I really, really have on all my cameras, and that is the ability to change from autofocus directly to manual focus right on the body. I know some lenses have it on there as well, but if your lens physically doesn't have it, just like this Tamron lens that I've got on here, uh, you really need to have that ability to change into manual focus right away. So if you do want that critical focusing and not you know, throw it into autofocus mode, which I do a lot, it's probably the most used feature on my FX6 is I've got autofocus on, but sometimes I really just need my own focus. I click it into manual focus and start manual focusing right there. Extremely important. So I've actually put that on custom button two. So to go into that, you go to autofocus, manual focus, then obviously autofocus, manual focus, and AF on. So is it? Now, the last one is the new dial that we're actually blessed with. So Sony actually changed that uh, exposure compensation dial at the top and you were able to customize it for whatever you want. Now, the front dial, I've left it as your aperture. The uh, rear dial, I've left it as shutter speed and the re other rear dial, the new rear dial, I've chucked it as ISO. So all you need to do is go into exposure right across into ISO down the bottom. And the same thing with shutter speed and aperture, they're just right there in the same setting. Okay, now we've got that out of the way. Now we need to go into some other settings that I have changed on the a7 IV. So we'll go directly into the setup option right down the bottom here. And then we go to the anti-dust function. Now this really depends on if you actually want this. Essentially what happens is when you turn the camera off, the shutter will actually come down and protect the sensor. So when you do actually put that on, it will give you a, a warning saying, do not leave the device exposed to strong light source such as sunlight because it could burn through the shutter. I'm not sure what happens there, but do not touch the shutter. Do not touch that electronic shutter. Do not physically touch that shutter because you may actually damage the shutter. That is one thing you don't want to do. So if you don't want any hassles, if you don't want to worry about that, don't turn this on. So the next one we go for is power setting option. So go up to number eight, power setting option and go right down to auto power off temp. Now it is on standard by default, so you go to high. So essentially if you are in uh, really hot temperatures, this raises that uh, temperature level so it won't shut off if it does tend to overheat. Now caution, uh, this may not be good for your camera in the long run. I haven't seen any negative sides to this uh, with anyone ever. So if you do change this to high, it is at your own risk, uh, but Sony do recommend you leave it at just the regular standard. Uh, so if it does get too hot, it will actually shut off, but it really depends on what you uh, find. So now going on to the next one, 
we will go up to autofocus, manual focus. Now I do change the autofocus speed. Now it really depends on your autofocus speed here, but I leave it at around five. I don't like that transition speed to be really snappy. It depends on the exact scene that I'm going for, but sometimes I like to tone it down to three or four. So the transition speed is actually a little bit slower, but you have the control of that and I just leave it at five. Now in terms of responsiveness, uh, it's same thing again, it comes down to, you know, do you want to show the camera something like this and it snapped to your hands or do you want to bring it back to your face, you know, quite smoothly? So it depends on how responsive you actually want that. I actually like to have it responsive, so I put it at five at the moment. Okay, so now I go to peaking display. So I like to put the peaking display on. So essentially it's just those red lines to show you exactly where uh, your peaking is or where your focus is. And I like to have it as red. Red's a really good uh, option. It really depends on what is in the scene. Sometimes I like to change the colors depending on if there is red in the scene. I'll change it to something opposite like uh, blue or green or something, white even. It really depends on what you find useful. Now in terms of peaking level, I just leave it as mid. Uh, that seems to be too good. Uh, I don't like to have it high because essentially it, uh, your uh, plane of focus is at low, it's like this. Medium, your plane of focus is like this and high, it becomes like this. So it becomes less accurate when you're actually doing some manual focus uh, because your focus plane actually shifts in terms of the peaking level, not your physical focus plane. So yeah, it really depends. I leave it on mid, sometimes I put it on low. Okay, so next one, I like to change uh, the color tone. So I like to shoot an S log three. So you go over to PP8, which is S log three, S gamma three dot cine. So that is generally the best one when it comes to color grading. If you do want to use S cine tone, it is just PP11. So you can throw it into PP11. Essentially that's uh, Sony's baked in LUT and it looks quite good out of the camera. Uh, I record pretty much all my talking head stuff like right now in S Cine Tone because I don't have to color grade it and I can just expose it as is. Okay, so zebra displays, I like to have zebra displays on. Uh, with the FX6, my workflow is a little bit different because I have histograms and I like to use um, on the monitor itself, false color. So false color is extremely uh, important for my workflow and I really recommend you guys learn false color. But in terms of my level uh, with the zebras, I turn it on at 95. So. The main thing that's important to me is that I don't completely blow out the highlights. But if I leave the peaking at uh, 95, I can pretty much see what's uh, blown out. And I just tone it back a little bit so I've just got a little bit of those zebras poking through. You can put it at 100 if you really wanted to. Um, so you can see what's pretty much 100% blown out and then just drop down your exposure a little bit. But the main thing you want to think about is exposing for skin tones. Now skin tones are generally around your yeah, 65-ish, 70%. It really depends on the situation. Sometimes you want a really uh, low-key setting, so that is a creative choice, but the main thing I worry about is not completely blemishing my skies and I have zero detail in the highlights. So as long as I don't blow out the highlights, perfectly happy because the noise floor on this is so good, so I like to uh, I bring up the shadows if I really need to. Uh, but I always expose for the highlights. Uh, that's my personal opinion. It really depends on what you do there, but I like to keep it at 95. Okay, so going into the image quality, it really depends on what you wanna film at. I am filming in XAVCSI, which is your highest codec. Now I don't really change anything too much here. You can change uh, the lens distortion compensation on, really depends. Uh, you can also turn that breathing compensation on down the bottom here if you do have uh, selected Sony lenses and it compensates for that uh, focus breathing, which is really, really cool in the a7 IV. Now in terms of the file setting, I definitely like to change this because uh, the file name is quite important, especially if you are mixing a few different cameras. Now. Uh, I like to put A7 IV as the title name. 
And essentially it's, it gives you a number, A74001, A74002. So it just uh, creates a file system like that. I have it with the FX6, so my files are FX6001, so on and so forth. And I do it with the A73 as well just so you can differentiate between which camera is actually which, uh, because sometimes the color science is a little bit different and you need to uh, correct for that. Now image stabilization, it really comes down to you. Sometimes if you do know you're a very shaky person, you can put it into active mode. It's purely up to you. I like to leave mine in standard because active mode, it does crop in a little bit and it does do a little bit of digital stabilization. So it really depends on what you want there, but I leave it on standard. So that is pretty much it from me. I hope you found this video useful. I Hopefully I didn't miss anything there. Uh, maybe I did. If I did, please comment below. I'd really like to know uh, if I have missed anything, but that's generally how I set up uh, the basics of the A74. There are a few other things that I like to tweak here and there if it doesn't work for me in the field, um, but I do recommend start setting up your A74 or whatever camera you have with all your customizable buttons so it's ready for you to actually choose when you do need it on the fly. So absolutely recommend doing that but yeah other than that guys i hope you found this video useful give it a thumbs up that would be absolutely amazing subscribe to my youtube channel if you already haven't and uh watch this video this video is a pretty good one and i'll see you guys in the next one all right let's get it